Uh, and maybe I'll do that right now. So this is gonna go in, let's get the sausage and the chicken cooking and then we'll tell a story. So I have a preheated saute pan and this works pretty well. We're gonna add a little bit of the olive oil that you got as a gift. Just enough down there, probably a teaspoon, but it'll nice because now it's getting warm. And we're gonna sear it so that the chicken goes in the pan with the skin down. For the first two minutes, you want it to be like that. And then you're gonna flip it over and you're gonna put it in the oven and we're gonna go through the process of how long and what we do with it. So we want a juicy chicken center. We want a crispy outside chicken and we wanna have enough flavor on there that no one's looking for salt. Okay, it's ready now, the oil's ready. You can see it start to smoke a little bit. If you don't know it's ready, you can always take a little bit of whatever herb you have and you can hear it. And now you know it's ready because the pan, things start to move. Let's get the skin down. You hear that one? Roman, come here. Don't leave me too far away. Oh, look at that. Look at this. So a high heat on there just to crisp it up. We're gonna wait to put the sausage in because typically the chicken is gonna take longer. So we don't want the sausage to be dry and overcooked. So let's do this right. Let's let this start off and then we add the sausage. Then it goes in the oven and then we'll go and talk about something else. What do you got here? Move this out and get this right out. I'm not hearing any questions from anyone. <laughs> they, they have thorough instructions. <laughs> The, uh, the red cabbage that came in your box, it's all seasoned and ready to go. You want to you warm that up just before you're ready to eat. And it doesn't need anything, any liquid. It's, it's juicy, but it just, it just uh, sucked up all the juice. Once it starts to get hot, those juices, the vinegar. This is an Austrian dish. And why an Italian food? Because I think it goes great with the chicken scarparello and some of the other dishes at the Chef Mark's Trattoria. This cabbage is made in a, in a German or Austrian way. And again, why an Italian restaurant? Because... In Italy, way over here in Altadija, is what it's called now, it used to be Austria, and the Italians took it over. So all the food and wine that's produced there, 90% of it still has an Austrian or German flair and flavor to it. So I like to use this dish, and it is Italian, all right? So I can't get in trouble. Now the skin has a nice crispness to it. You can see it, you can hear it, you can smell it. I'm going to add the sausage now. And that's raw sausage that you have, and it's going to go right in there. Okay. And if you can see this, I'm going to turn the chicken over so you can see how beautiful the skin already has become. Wow. And look at that, huh? Is that beautiful? That's something an oven can do. No, this is because you got, the pan was preheat, nice olive oil went in there, olive oil has a, you know, a very uh, low sm smoke point, so you're going to get a, a quick sear. You don't want to burn it, you just want to sear it. That's a brown color, and that's beautiful. Those herbs are now encrusted like a crust right into the chicken, and now they go do their next job, which is to cook in the oven. And since I have a small oven here for the show, I'm going to slide. You can put this right in your oven at 400 degrees. That should be preheated. But I'm going to put this one in here because this is what fits in this oven. All right, that was good. So now we're gonna get another pan going. And this pan I'm gonna show you right here is gonna be our polenta pan because look what you got over here. You have beautiful polenta. This is nice Italian polenta. We're gonna make it perfectly so that it's smooth and creamy and absolutely delicious. And that again, with the cabbage, with the polenta and with that spicy chicken scarparello, it's all gonna to go together, uh, you know, just like it should. So now we're going to get this pan going. Already I have a warm area here. We're going to put this on. Not so hot. And we're going to have the ingredients for the polenta ready to go in to make the polenta. What are the ingredients? You want to help? You never made polenta with me, have you? I've made polenta once, I think, at home, but it All probably right. wasn't anything like this. Roman's going to be here one, one day soon because we're going to do the real Arancini show. Like, we both went to Palermo and we had the real Arancini from the, one of the most ancient places you could ever imagine eating at or seeing. And uh, it was so good, I got the recipe for it. So we, we make them at the restaurant a few times. And we'll make some nice arancini. You can do that at home as well. So now I have my pan starting to get really nice and hot. I just put a little dribble of water in there. It doesn't come with, the, with everything, but I just want to get it started. And also, when I start a pan, anything I do, I want to put a little seasoning down there. Because otherwise, you're going to look for salt later on somewhere. How come it doesn't take... Well, 
you have to start with something. So I'm gonna put a little bit of liquid down there. Right now I have the salt and pepper, and I'm gonna put what came in your box, the milk, right into the pot. It's gonna warm up pretty quickly. We're also gonna season that again. Now a bigger amount of salt. That was a nice pinch. I probably have a, to show you one day what a pinch really is, but for me, you know, it looks like that. That's a pinch. Here's a pinch of black pepper going in there, and we're just waiting for it to get a little hotter, and then we're both gonna work this together, Roman, because we have to whisk it, because the trick to making good polenta, not only having a good flavor and timing it, but it's also the action of your wrist when you're whisking this, because if you just put it in and then mix it, you're gonna get lumps. Why is my polenta all lumpy? Because you didn't, you didn't go real slow with the polenta and mix it really quickly with a whisk so that it becomes you know, incorporated with the cream and the liquid. Uh, it doesn't have a chance to become lumpy when you do it right. So let's, uh, let's do this right over here. Huh? Okay. Give me the, how do you do it? The big one, I'll take the big one, yeah. I don't care, yeah. I know you don't have this at home, Okay, I don't know what, you know, this is pretty big. Two foot so, Yeah, so let's do this. I'm gonna switch over to here. A little closer. And you pour it in slow and I'll whisk it so I can show them exactly. Okay. Yeah. What you wanna do is just do it nice and slow. A little at a time. You know what, let's do it over here. I'm gonna do it over here so you get a better view. Go ahead. Slow, slow, slow. Now this is going to continue to get mixed well just and then all that cream and all that little bit of those polenta is going to become the beautiful dish that we'll see soon so i want you to come over here and keep working that not as fast but make sure it keeps working and nothing's stuck together and then we'll season it again we'll check it we'll see how things are going but let me tell you a little bit about let me tell you a little bit of a story about the chicken and uh and things coming from that area you got that now yeah so a long time ago, 100 years ago again, my family came from South Italy, from Calabria exactly. And when they got uh, halfway here, my grandfather told me the story that one of his brothers was blinded on the boat by, from a fire. So when he got to Ellis Island, they had to, you know, when he got, they had to know he, he got blinded. So what can they do? They're gonna let him in America, but he had to have a trade. So they made him learn how to tune a piano or cane a chair. He did them both, and I watched my grandfather when I used to uh, see him in upstate New York when he was alive, always caning a chair, somebody would drop off, and I asked him how, and he told me that story. So I thought that was pretty cool, and uh, you don't see people caning chairs anymore. I guess it's done by machines now. So how's that coming? It's good. Is it important for the, uh, the heavy creams? Uh... You, once you, you're gonna see something happen once that gets hot enough. It's not ready yet, because there's cold, still, you know, the, the milk hasn't absorbed and made that polenta 15 times size it started. Oh wait, hold on, I think I have a question. What, what's up? Did someone say something? Oh, here we go. I'm gonna show you a beautiful salad now. Did we already add the butter? Uh, Mark, did we add the butter? No, no, no. no. we add the butter? No, no, I have the butter and cheese right here. Good question. You wanna wait till it's just about done. We'll put the butter in right at the end. If, you know, some people put heavy cream in at the end. We started this with milk, we're fine. But we're gonna put the cheese and we're gonna put the butter right at the end and stir it in, and that's gonna be the last step. I don't want you to dress your salad at home. I'm sorry, what? Question coming in. What right, is it? Right now we're just what? Yeah, you just wanna keep whisking it the whole time. You could walk away if you want to. I'm just torturing him a little bit. But you could, you could actually walk away, but don't walk away for too long. Maybe a minute, then go look at it. You can get a wooden spoon. A lot of people like wooden spoons of polenta. I like it too. But here we got to show you, you know, the fast action. And everybody has a whisk at home. Uh, so that's really good. So it sounds very colorful. Now it's been about five minutes. So I'm gonna take the chicken that went in and flip it, and we're gonna go to the next stage of the cooking uh, process of that. Mark, the heat on this might be a little bit too high. Can I lower it? Yeah, there's the, there's the arrow right there, you see it? 
I have a chicken I cooked earlier halfway through just to show you what it looks like. And it's have a nice color, but this one wasn't cut up. But it's, look how beautiful and you know, you can just see I'm touching it. The juices are staying inside because we're cooking this correctly and we have a nice sear on the outside. That's a, that's a really good thing that you should do always with these kind of meats, whether they have a skin on them or, or not. You can use flour if there's no skin and that'll help give you that seal. But when you put salt, pepper and flour, we didn't use flour because we have a skin. You thinking this is ready for the butter? No, 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 you have time. Right. Now see how your polenta, bring it over here. Let's play with it right here. Let me, let me, let me see. He's been stirring this polenta. It takes about a total of 10 minutes. So now look how beautiful creamy that looks. But it still has to be like soft and not gritty. And that's where you have to taste it. So if you want to ask, is it ready for the butter? Have this spoon, because I don't think it is, but just give you a little taste. And you'll know if it's gritty, then you need to add more liquid. No, it's not. It's kind of smooth. A, a little, little bit gritty. A little gritty. So a little gritty, liquid, we, yeah. we're just going to do a little, a little bit longer. And we're going to add... What is that, chicken stock? We're just going to touch it. We just put a touch in there. You have chicken stock in your box, and since this got a little... This looks really good. It's kind of like the Italian mashed potato. That's what it looks like. We use it like... We use it like you would use mashed potato next to protein. Like next to some fish, we might put this. Uh, certain fish. We have grouper tonight. So now we're getting ready to show you what the salad looks like because you can get this ready now. So you have a nice dressing at home. This is a beautiful seasoned red wine vinaigrette with actually virgin olive oil. So all you want to do is stir it up a little bit. I like to put everything in a bowl so I could move it around really well, and get it coated. But when you put it in a bowl, if you had something you want to season or you want to use as like this dressing, don't go in the middle, especially if it's a leafy lettuce. This isn't, so it doesn't. Uh, but in any, anyway, let's do it right. Let's start on the edge of the bowl. See, so it goes like this. And then when you toss it, you're grabbing that and bringing it into the product. So you don't have to cover. This is the way you do it. Whether you're tossing it or using tongs and moving around, I'm just taking the front and bringing it to the back. And while the dressing just hits the wall. And now we can plate this. And when you tasted it, when the grittiness was in your mouth, how, how much? Like sand? Lot. I'd say it's Or ready. like almost ready? I'd okay. say it's ready now. All right, so let's, let's do this. We're going to add the butter and the cheese to the polenta and give it a little, little touch of salt and pepper, and that'll be finished. This is the nice salad. You can do it for four. You can do it for two. You can share it. Everybody, that's so nice. I want to take a little... EVO, these little croutons, you can just place them around, wow. a little crunch, a little color, a lot of freshness, a nice healthy start to a nice beautiful meal. Next time I'm coming to your house. Okay, so there's your, if you want, it's always nice to top it a little bit. Let's put a little fresh cracked pepper that we do earlier here that makes it, wakes it up a little bit. And if you like, you have some dress, dressing left, just put that spoon back in. Because this isn't a, a, a typical salad with lettuce leaves, you just kind of go down the middle like this. We already put nice olive oil on it, so it's a well-dressed salad. It's just gonna soak up them flavors for a little while and uh, everybody enjoy, so that's a nice healthy start. Also in the box, you have a beautiful cannoli shells, four of them. And we also provided you a really nice filling that we made. First time I ever made this one, so let me know about it. Dried cherries, different raisins, different flavors, really nice. So what's the time now? How much time have we, been, have we had in, uh, already so far? Okay, so we've been going 10 minutes and a half, right? So the chicken should be getting pretty close. At home, you have another 15, 20 minutes to go. It depends on what type of oven you have. We go over this a lot every week. And uh, some of you have confection ovens, and, and uh, the difference is it's got a fan, and it's going to be, if you put it at 350 degrees, you're cooking at 550 degrees or more because that air concentrates the heat and also makes the most beautiful food. So I prefer a confection oven. But uh, if you have a regular oven, uh, and you have the chicken in there now baking away, it'll be fine. That baking process after we made that nice sear is just gonna heat slowly and nicely and the chicken is just gonna cook itself in there. Very, I think it's gonna be beautiful. 
First time I, I ever gave anybody this recipe is tonight, you, right here. So it's pretty special, pretty cool that you can do this at home and, and experience it all. So maybe I'll just stuff a few cannolis for you because uh, that will be something to do while we're waiting for the chicken to cook. Do you want me to put the cheese and butter in the polenta? If it's ready, yeah, bring it over here. Let's do it now. Yeah, we, we, we should do that. Does it look too thick to you? Let's get rid of this yeah. now. Let's get rid of this. Get right, right in the center there. So everybody can see where it's going. Let's get a small one. Go ahead and put the butter in. Okay, there you go. And the cheese. Your amount of cheese can go in now. Go ahead. Then you can just like keep it warm. Just put it somewhere where, it, where it'll stay warm. Because this won't get, this won't cool off yeah, quickly at all. Yeah, it's better to have a wooden spoon at this point. Just give me that spoon. Right there. This one? Yeah. Okay. All right, so just stir it in. Nice and tight right now. If, if you like it a, a little bit looser, you can add a little water or chicken broth. But you know, if you have heavy cream, a lot of people like to use heavy cream. I might use a touch of heavy cream in here if I was in the kitchen. I like it. I like it a little bit looser. But that's kind of a nice consistency. To eat. It's like a mashed potato. It's not going anywhere. It's not hard. I think it'll be perfect for this dinner because you're gonna have a lot of juices coming out of the chicken pan, and that if you share it in the plate with the polenta, uh, you could just grab onto it and eat it like that, kind of like soaking it up. So we're good with that. Seven minutes means that's what's left, yeah? Okay, beautiful. So that chicken probably can come out and rest in three or four minutes, but let's stuff some ganoles. Ganoles. You cut the tip off, Roman. Okay. And cut it the perfect size. What's the perfect size? About that much. Yeah, you'd be all right. Something like that. There, you go. there is no perfect size, but you have a, a space right here to fill, so you don't want a little hole. So now we, we gave you these beautiful bags uh, with our with our cannoli filling, so I'm gonna just fill them for you right now. What's in there? Cherries and stuff. Yeah, all kinds of beautiful wow. dry fruit. Uh, regatta is regatta salata. Again, it's a special pastry regatta. Oh, look at when a cherry looks really nice. It does. They have shops just for cannolis. A lot of places in Italy, especially in Naples, and again in Palermo, where we had some of the best cannolis. So that's how I would do it if I were you. That's really nice looking, and everybody can have fun with a nice. First time ever, dry fruit cannoli from Chef Mark. Let me know, another one, you gotta let me know Can't about it. Can't forget to touch a couple of these. All right, let me have that there, here we go. Almost forgot, let's get a little candied walnut on there. That comes already done for you, so you don't have to worry about how we did that. But uh, it's pretty cool. So this is nice dessert. Move everything off the table. I have all, uh, everything on this here. Right now I want to take my chicken and I would add, if you like it hot, this is what you're going to do now. Because you have a, a, a few minutes left to cook it, like five minutes. So I would take these peppers, the pepperoncini, and it's like a mild hot pepper. It's not that hot at all. And I would take the hot cherry peppers if you really like the flavor. And that's what you would put in the scarparilla along with this just now before it's done. Where it has about, after about two or three minutes, you're going to have two minutes left. And I want to add these things at that point so that you sear the pan, you deglaze the pan or whatever's sticking to it. I don't have my oven big enough around or you do at home. So I'm going to kind of guide you through this without showing you everything. But when the pan comes out of the oven, it's going to be very hot. So of course, you know, use a nice dry towel. Never use a wet towel in a hot pan. It'll go right through it. So you want to grab that, that pan out carefully and set it somewhere. And now you're going to see the chicken is going to be sizzling and there'll be juices down there. That's when you want to add this beautiful chicken broth and vinegar mixture that we made to give it that uh, beautiful deglazing. And then as it cooks down, bring it back to your gas and let it cook down or leave it in the oven to let it cook down. And that's when you add your hot, how spicy do you want it? Uh, pretty spicy or mildly spicy, but it needs a little spice. So put that in there and then everything comes together. You're waiting here. You got a, a few more minutes. Uh, you know, you, 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 can, you can get ready, the table ready, the food will be out soon, and uh, you want to play catch? <laughs> okay, so we're ready. I want to show you what the, 
the, the finished product looks like right now because I have it already done. So you can, either you're almost there or you can have something to look forward to. The only thing I didn't put on here is the polenta because I just made it. So I'm gonna do that right now. And you can make your plates look just like this at home. This is exactly what we did today. This is what you're doing now. This is the chicken scarparello with the homemade sausage cut at an angle. The beautiful Austrian cabbage. I have the nice polenta that my nephew made, Roman, right here. I think we can add a little touch of salt to the top of the polenta. And uh, you want to taste it? Of course. Okay. We're going to do like some of them guys on TV. We're going to taste it and make a big deal of it. But I think we should make a big deal of it. So let's go. The cabbage I want to try first. And I want to put it right with the polenta because they go together like bread and butter. You would put some sort of uh, meat in the cabbage sometimes, right? Mmm. Apple smoked bacon. Mm hmm. These two definitely go really good together. And then you get the little spice in the sausage. We're just going to eat while you, while you cook, right? Uh, it's my turn. Kind of like over here. You have a little drumstick, a little hot cherry pepper. Let me do this. Let me cut a piece of chicken for everybody at home, see how juicy it is. And it's been sitting around for a little bit. Here, Ro. Try it. Restaurant business, we eat off a cutting board, often. Okay, this is the chicken. Perfect. And the crust on the outside from all the the herbs. You won't be looking for salt, I'll tell you that. Mm -hmm. Wow, that was really good. I like the spice in it. Everything adds a little something. All right, so polenta, chicken jadori, barber shop style, or scarparella, whatever you want to call it. And we don't even know where it came from, but we're glad it's here. I'm glad that you're here. I'm Chef Mark. This is What's Cooking with Chef Mark. Again, do yourself a favor, push the subscribe button. I thank my nephew, Roman, the Ahern Hotel, 300 West Sahara, for having me here and doing all this. This is a wonderful opportunity for everyone to enjoy what we're going to do in the future here. I can't wait to share it with you. I'm so excited. I want to go to sleep and wake up and it all be done. But there's a, a many days between then and now. So uh, have a great night, everybody. Love you. Salute. Cheers. God bless. Thank you. Any questions coming in? He wants to talk to somebody. Come on. Mm -hmm. We didn't make it eat that easy, did we? Something? Anybody got anything to say? There he is. There's How my... do you know when the chicken's done? It should be, if your oven was 400 degrees and it took 30 minutes, then it's done. As long as it's not a confection oven. It's still going with the sausage. His uh, tell chicken's him to, still tell going. Him to, tell him to take, another, take whatever time he has to take. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's been eating the Kenny Walnuts by himself. <laughs> Can't help himself. I know right where you are, I know. <laughs> Yeah, they're good. They're sweet. They're good. 30 minutes, 400 degrees. You should have a perfect chicken. Let it rest about five minutes before you eat it. It'll be perfect. If you cut it up like I did, and I hope you did, uh, if it's, it's going to be close now. Right now, it's going to be very, very close to being done. If you put it in at the beginning of the video. If you didn't put it at the beginning of the video, five minutes in, ten minutes in, then give yourself another seven, ten minutes. Okay? And all you got to do is take a, like your fork at, while it's in the pan and open it up right near the joint. Uh, and you can see, like, if there's any pink in it, put it back in the oven. I want to see who out there used all the cherry, cherry peppers <laughs> in their pan. That'd be maybe a spice four. Who here is crazy? When you come to the restaurant, we, we go a spice level. We go a spice level anywhere from zero to five. And I, so we get a lot of people that like the five spice. Where you at, Frankie? How long has it been in the oven? Okay, everyone, I think this video is about over for me, but you're just starting to have fun. Enjoy your dinner. Is that it? Goodbye. Is that it?